Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Please Hear What I'm Not Saying by Isabel Kenyon. Now, confession time, I've already recorded and edited this video, and then somehow that edited file got corrupted, so I'm refilming and re-editing it, I guess. Luckily, all of my little things are actually still in the top of this one for some reason. So, this is a poetry collection of various, mostly indie poets, writing modern poetry, um, but it's all about mental health. It's actually in aid of Mind, the mental health charity. And I was offered a copy of this for review, so I was like, yes, I will definitely check that out. I think it's both something that affects me in terms of mental health, but also I write poetry myself as well. I actually write poetry about mental health, and I might even be appearing in, you know, number two of these if, if it ever gets made. I'll put my name on the waiting list anyway. So, I'm just going to quickly read you the blurb. With over 600 submissions, poets from around the world put their pens to paper to create this anthology, infused by a common goal to raise money for the charity Mind. With poems focusing on mental health from a wide range of experiences, this book aims to continue the worldwide conversation about mental health. So a few things I want to mention just before I go into the bulk of this review, I guess. For a start, I really like the way that it's laid out, so you'll see the titles of the poems are actually along the bottom, and this kind of puts more of a focus on the poems themselves. They're also grouped very well together into themes so that they complement each other. It feels like a natural running order, you know. But at the same time, you as the reader are invited to name each of the sections so they don't come with their own names. And I just thought that was a very cool way of making it, you know, more of an engaging read, more of an engaging experience. I mean, I personally didn't write into it because... I don't write in books, I put stickies in, but I think it's great that it's there, you know. The only real problem I actually found with this was that there were a few layout problems for the author bios, but apart from that I thought it was fantastic. It's fantastic, really good quality modern poetry, it's been edited well, like I say the layout's great, and there's also a huge diverse of ta like diverse range of talent here, not just in terms of the people themselves who are writing the poems, but also what they're writing about. So we have everything from anxiety and depression, which I personally can really relate to, to things like borderline personality disorder and dementia and Alzheimer's and things like that. Things about the effects of mental health as well. So there's a poem about someone who has to use a food bank, for example, because they're just not fit to work and they're not getting enough support from, from, from the government. So. I really enjoyed this and as I've been doing recently with poetry reviews what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rating here and then I'm going to read some of the poems to give you a better sense of whether this is the kind of poetry that you like or not. I think you know I posted a video a little while back about reviews and whether they're subjective and objective and I think poetry for me should be subjective, it should be emotion led, it should be something that you relate to and that makes you feel things as the reader. As much as I get that you can go in and, you know, analyse poetry and look at what the imagery means and all this stuff. I don't know. It's it, it's like killing your pet dog and then dissecting him to see what makes him tick, you know. It's just like, I'd, I'd rather keep the pet dog, to be honest. So I'm going to start by quickly reading the letter from the editor. This book has been a labour of love for me. The project started with the simple idea that I wanted to work collaboratively on a project with other poets. I also wanted to do something for a charity and I believed that mental health charities were under significant strain and doing some very important work. When I first put the word out that I was accepting submissions for the anthology Please Hear What I'm Not Saying, I didn't think many people would want to be involved. The sheer number of people in contact with me is a testimony to the work which mine does. This book is divided into sections. The idea is that the sections grow with positivity and that by the end of the book you will be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Therefore, please feel free to dip in and out of sections, and if you begin to find the words too heavy, please do nip straight to the last sections for a breather. I hope you enjoy reading this book. Thank you for your contribution to mind. Love, Isabel Charlotte Kenyon. And that is something very important that I should mention. All proceeds from this do go to Mind, which is a mental health charity. It does great work. I'll actually I'll link to Mind's website below as well. So anything you can do to help Mind is always good. Oh, I didn't actually give it my rating, did I? So my rating for this was a solid 4.5 out of 5. I don't know what it could have done to make it a 5 out of 5, but I feel like I would have known it if it was. That said, on all Goodreads and Amazon and stuff, I've, I've moved it up to a 5 rather than moved it down. So... It was, a, it was a solid 4.5. So we're going to go through some of the poems. I'm going to let you know what the poem's called and who it's by, and then we'll read the poems. So, Depression by Angela Topping. Unwelcome guest who arrives without warning and has to be accommodated, has the fussiest needs, won't eat meals, snacks on chocolate, disturbs sleep, shows no interest in outings, 
occupies the best chair. Leaves without warning one fine day, no word of thanks or goodbye, will be back one day when least expected. This is Wired by Barry Fenton and Hall. I am wired by palsied hands, working from an out of date circuit plan. I was bright eyed once, a lighthouse of shifting colours, but sometimes now I disconnect, overloaded and bared. My copper is mined too deep in the dark, and I spark as positive and negative do battle. I cannot find an earth to put my skin on. Even with my face pressed into the dirt, this electricity, it burns, it hurts, as people far away watch the pretty lightning. This is Mr. Depression by Catherine Whitaker. Arrives quietly on a Wednesday afternoon, gradually fills up your doorway until you know you'll have to invite him to stay. Come in from the cold, you'll say. Shake his hand. Open your heavy wood door wide. Offer him steak and fish. Whiskey to keep him warm. Here's my comfortable chair by the fire, you'll say, in your best welcoming voice. Here's my bed, it's king size. There's shutters to keep out the noise. You'll serve him breakfast, eggs benedict on your best plates. Stay as long as you need, you'll say. Treat him well, and one day soon he'll leave, quietly, the same way he arrived. Carl Ray's first attempt by Connie Ramsey Bott. I was eight years old. He smiled at me across the kitchen table, showed me the scar on his side where he'd aimed the gun and tried to end it all. He could only eat baby food, offered me applesauce, and we laughed about his botched attempt at escape. As it said earlier, if these are getting a bit too much, skip towards the end of this video and we'll get to some of the, you know, more hopeful poems. Life is a Lesson to Those Who Listen by Andy Hallward When we talked about self-harm in lesson, you pulled your sleeves down to cover your wrists. Everyone laughed about emos. I sat in silence and wondered if they knew. When we had lunch after a lesson about eating disorders, you didn't eat anything and went for a walk. Nobody noticed you wasting away. I sat in silence and wondered if they knew. When they talked about suicide in the lesson, you weren't in. Nor the day after or the day after. Weeks went past, months, then years. I sat in silence and wondered if they knew. My Body is a Shapeshifter by Melissa Jennings. And this one shows that you don't have to have loads of words to pack a punch. My mother told me to be wary of strangers. So I became afraid of the person staring back at me in the mirror. There's another short but powerful one. Rushing by Neil Elder. I am rushing home from work, after only just arriving, to check whether I turn the iron off. As far as my colleagues know, I'm meeting a client, but not the one I saw yesterday when I had to check the cooker. This is Wish I Could Shake This by Linda M. Crate. The anxiety keeps me awake at night. Monsters I know are false seem true, no matter how many times I tell my mind to stop it insists on going down these roads, and I've always felt everything so deeply and profoundly, even when I feel nothing it feels like a knife in my soul. Wanted to defeat this curse so I can finally be free, find a way to breathe, be able to sleep like everyone else, not walk on the needles of all my worries, nettling and biting until eventually my body shuts off my brain so I can get some sort of relief. I never remember when I finally fell asleep. Sometimes I wake so tired I must sleep again. I wish I could just shake these neurotic worries and stop my mind from wandering in circles until it makes me panic. And I relate to that one a lot because I get really bad insomnia as well. This is called Remember Me by Jacqueline Pemberton. Do I know you, dear? The question she asks me every morning with her lemon smile and tepid eyes. I'm Denise, your daughter, I say to the empty space between us. I wish she'd had a sudden death and not this sleeping sickness that makes a drought of memory. I show her photographs, my first birthday, first day at school, graduation, the wedding. I want to plant a seed within her frozen womb, let her recall that first flicker, how she touched her belly with a secret smile, remember the pain of labour as she struggled to give birth, held me against her swollen breast with joy. Let her start again from my first breath. Return to find the child in me, the awkward adolescent, the middle-aged woman who longs to be hugged. Start the journey of our past again. Are you sure, dear? I thought I had a son. So this is Social Media Invented Self-Love, and this is by Isabel Kenyon, who is the editor of this as well. And I actually highlighted this as one of my favourite poems without putting the two and two together and realising that, that this is the, the, you know, the girl who edited it as well. So, so Social Media Invented Self-Love by Isabel Kenyon. I'm not very good at this self-love thing. I always look for strangers thinking they could do it better, and I don't post about it online. I forget, I'm no use. That girl with the juice blender and the personal trainer is far ahead of me. 
That's why people pay her to promote beauty products, so other people can buy them and love themselves too. This is A Bird With Broken Wings by Kelsey Rose, and I love the metaphor of A Bird With Broken Wings. So A Bird With Broken Wings by Kelsey Rose. Depression is a bird with brain damage from slamming into your dining room window. Over slam and over slam again. Hope may be Dickinson's thing with the feathers, singing wordlessly into the night, but depression is the bird flopping its broken wings, throwing itself headlong into invisible barriers over and over again. And when you think that it has stopped, when you think that it has realised that it cannot keep going, it hits so hard that everything shatters. So this is Silver Lining by Katie Lewington, and I actually know Katie Lewington Previously, I've actually read and reviewed a few of her books, and I didn't realise she was in this collect collection until actually after I picked it up as well. So this is Silver Lining. I stop writing and my life falls apart, as if that smashing of a wrecking ball into a building. Splinters of me fly out and everybody runs for cover because they don't want to be burdened with my pain. But you have to get through that pain to fully appreciate that whatever physical pressures are placed upon your body, your mind can remain clear. The strength is in your beliefs, and you have to steer the ship of your destiny, and now I start to write. Storm clouds part, and I can see chinks of light appearing. And so that's about all I'm going to let you know about this one, but one last thing I wanted to do, seeing as this is a collection of poetry about mental health, I wanted to do my poem about mental health, if you guys all have me. Yeah, it's awkward because I'm, I'm on YouTube, so I can't read the mood of the room, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this is my mental health poem. It's about anxiety and it's called Dying. I think I might be dying, but I might not be dying, but either way I'm going to die, whether the sky falls in or I die by my own hand, and I don't want to die because no one ever does, but if I do die, I'm glad I didn't die before I met you. Anxiety sucks and it fucks up your life till you're lying in bed with a duvet on your head crying, and this is my moment of weakness, because life can seem bleak and the days become weeks and disappear again, and you might still be breathing but you're still feeling evil and sleeping uneasily. I just don't understand how people plan their lives out, get married, have kids, and watch TV evening after evening when I can't see past the weekend and I get that there's a lot to play for because people recognize potential and think that I'm mental but no one's saying ever change the world for better or for worse yeah thank you and uh, on that note thanks a lot for watching don't forget to leave a comment to let me know what you think about this poetry collection maybe let me know which of the poems that I read were your favorite do check this out if you are interested in it because, again, all proceeds go to Mind as well. And, uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button if you're new here and would like more videos. And I will see you soon in another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.